Hello, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Tech Talks with TNE. I am Terry Samuels, and along with my wife Elizabeth. Hi. We're, uh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> Monday. Um, anyways, uh, we're looking forward to spending some time with you guys here. Um, we are having a special guest today, Mr. Patrick Shannon. There he is. Um, anyways, hello. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Elizabeth, how are you? I'm good. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Mr. Patrick. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good, good. We did a little uh, little weekend vacation. Okay. Um, Love feeling, it. Feeling a little burnt out. So we, we're staying at a resort in Orlando. Um for a few days. So I'm in a hotel right room right now. Sorry. I'm trying to trying to get the lighting correct. No, no problem at all. So kind of like a staycation. You guys just stayed around there. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. And this uh see if I can pull this up a little bit. This is the view we're working with today. Ah, that's cool. There's an ah. amazing swimming pool right there. Like I don't know Hardship. how to do this. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty right awesome. On. Are you guys gonna do Disney or anything crazy like that? You know, I threw my back out, so we're just kind of like wow. taking it easy, um, try, trying to exercise and, you know, being in my 40s, I guess, doesn't always go well. So <laughs> went and got a, a, a massage yesterday and, you know, um, trying to work through it. So we passed on Disney, though. I ha we, have the, we have the season pass but we just uh, for Universal, but we uh, I just think it's too much walking for what I'm feeling right now, you know? <clears throat> yeah, for sure, 100%. So, well, welcome. I'm glad you took the time out to come visit with us. And um, we uh, we started this a few weeks ago, I think. I think this is our 10th one. Um, and we just like to have people on that, uh, you know, we have relationships with and that we trust and, you know, talk a little bit about how they got started and some of the stuff they're doing and, you know, kind of what they're looking forward to in the future. And for sure. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. I obviously know your story. You're you're a dear friend of ours, um, more of a coach, I think, coach and brother than anything else. Um, but, um, you know, so tell us a little bit about yourself as far as, you know, how'd you even get started in this crazy freaking game? Yeah. So um, I grew up in a small town in Ohio, you know, and I graduated in 2001 from college. And I, I came out of school. It was, it was kind of like a rough time to, to graduate from college. The economy was in a tough spot. A lot of people were having trouble getting jobs. So I decided to stay extra and I added on like a second major, which was um, accounting. And I came out of college and was a tax accountant. That was awful. That was, <laughs> that was not for me. I was so bored, uh, but I was playing poker with my buddies uh, on the weekends and, and um, you know, things were going pretty well. And, you know, then I won like a, I, uh, a tournament online and the prize was a cruise. And then on that cruise, I won another cruise and then a, a ticket out to Vegas to play in the world series of poker. And, you know, I, during that week I, I made, you know, probably more money in, in like a week than I would at like three months as an accountant. So I was like, man, you know, as somebody growing up in a small town in Ohio, you don't quit your job to play poker. That's not a thing that's unheard of. And it's not yeah. like people are like, Oh, Patrick, they're like, this guy's going to be homeless. So I, I, I listened to those people for a little while. And, and um, you know, one of the biggest learning lessons is just kind of like learning to believe in yourself. And, uh, you know, that kind of happened along that way. But I ended up moving out to Vegas. I'm out there for, um, you know, I ended up playing poker for a living for 10 years. And I was living out in Vegas. And I was kind of seeing a, a side of things that I hadn't seen when I was playing mostly online. A lot, a lot of, like, people losing money that shouldn't be losing it and just – I felt like I was doing something immoral, you know, and I know people make their choices to be there, but it's also like, you know, you've got kind of the logic side of your brain and the emotion side of your brain, and they don't always agree. And mm -hmm. I, it was in a conflict and, and then they banned online poker and then they brought it back. And when they brought it back, I was like, okay, I'm going to play online and get out of this like casino and, and, um, the tools they had available were awful. So I, um, I, I decided I was going to build like a, a tool and I, I started, um, started building a note a poker note taking tool. Um, you know, I, I signed up for lynda.com. I bought a second computer and a TV and I was just like trying to take notes on players because mm -hmm. 
the sites didn't have that availability. And, and poker is a game that's all about understanding people and adjusting. So, um, you know, that led to now I know how to be a software engineer. And then I got, you know, I spent three years, four years as a software engineer for a company building like Android and I, iOS apps. And if you're good at talking to people and you also um, have tech ability, people are like, hey, can you build me this or do this? So yeah. I started building websites for people when I realized, you know what? the way we're building these websites, they're not going to get what they want. What they want is more business. And um, so we, then we started paying attention to SEO and, you know, we um, were building out, um, you know, these SEO websites and, and the tools that were available for SEO, just like in poker. I was like, man, this, this is not what I need. This is not what I want. This isn't working how I need it to. So then we started building our own internal tool, which later became LeadSnap, you know, and um, through, I'm somebody who loves to help people. And, you know, I, I was in a few different groups and I saw people struggling and I started sharing what, what was working for us as our agency grew. And, you know, that led to like over the last like six or seven years, like I've, I've coached more than a thousand people, um, done more than a thousand coaching calls. So um, my wife and I, you know, she, she retired in I think 2019 and we spent two years traveling around the world. So we spent like three months living in, one place and another then COVID hit and we bought an RV and traveled around the country. And, you know, so now we have, um, we have the marketing agency, um, which is which funded a lot of this stuff, including lead snap. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, we have lead snap and then we have the coaching program rank masters where like the goal is to try to help people be free. And, you know, mm -hmm. we start these businesses to be free. And sometimes we become a slave to a job in a company that we own. And, you know, it's, that sucks. That's, that's no way life is too short to live that way. For sure, hundred percent. So, yeah. and that's awesome. So, what was the first thing that you built before it was Lead Snap? What was the first thing out of all the thung stuff Lead Snap does? You guys built that you really were excited about? Honestly, uh, you know that eighty twenty rule, like the, mm -hmm. the these little things have some of the little things inside Lead Snap have meant have, have been a big big uh, difference. You know we. We installed this thing to block spam from form submissions and we have hundreds of sites and, and like when we turned that on and we didn't have to deal with any form submission spam anymore it was like overnight the difference was like that that was in the beginning and i have this old man who was a dealer uh he was a dealer in the casino and he was looking for a job and and uh he was kind of like a receptionist his name was mm -hmm. robert and like this guy um remind me like a new york city cab driver right like that's this guy was answering the calls. He was good to people, but he was very animated. And, you know, when um, we turned the spam blockers on and I, I, had, I didn't tell him, I just want to see his reaction. And he's like, what's going on here? Like, there's no spam today. What did you do? You know? And, <laughs> <clears throat> so that, that was, that was a, and, and that was something that, you know, didn't compared to some of the, the builds that we did in there. That was, that was one of the ones that that was a pretty easy thing for us to add on, you know? Yeah, for sure. So how did you find or what did, you know, because connecting to Google is one thing and start bringing in data and start being able to do stuff. But when did you like search through a whole bunch of like devs to help you get the connections, all that stuff kind of figured out? Or that seems to be the hardest thing about when you're dealing with any kind of tools is finding those people that have that magic, so to speak. Yeah, it's 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 certainly not easy, and um, this is an area where we've certainly we, we've made a lot of mistakes along the way. I think having a background as a software engineer mm -hmm. allows you to sort through some of the bullshit that's out there. Um, and and you know, I, I think I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. One of the things that I've learned is is like if you want to find people to do work. There, there's a ton of them out there, right? They're, they're mm -hmm. on Upwork and onlinejobs.ph and a million other sites. And the people that are there are, are these aren't the rock stars. The rock stars don't troll job boards. They get pulled from one company to another because people are after them. They always have a job. They're not over there trying to pick up a, uh, you know, they're not over there trying to pick up freelance work on Upwork because mm -hmm. they, they're, they're, they're being fought over constantly so yeah. you got to take your mind out of finding people that way and you got to go outside of it and that can mean um you know leveraging your social circle 
Um, it could be using LinkedIn recruiter and stuff like this, looking at the companies that maybe are, are your competitors or that, that have similar technology stacks that you can like, okay, this person's worked for this like great company for many years. Something has to be true for that to be the case. And like mm-hmm. great companies not going to keep somebody like that unless they're doing a good job. So sure. um, Brad at our, our event mentioned like reaching out to universities and, and I thought that was fantastic. I hadn't tried that before, depending mm-hmm. on the role you're looking for. I think that can be great, but yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, the, the APIs and the connections to these different platforms can be understood by people if they take their time, especially if they have like the engineering brain, like what's the correct way to structure this and, and put things together. So it's mm-hmm. like, they can learn these other platforms. So like, it would be fantastic if you'd say like, Hey, I want to find this person. That's like this Google business profile expert that has like six years of this, but that may be not realistic to try to find that person. <laughs> For sure. And that's uh so how, how old is Lead Snap? Um, we started building it as an internal tool in like 2017. We launched okay. it in 2020. So okay. we built it for three years with no plans of really selling it. And and then you know, we've had it as a commercial product for um I guess October. October will be four years. Awesome. And just so you know, everybody knows, I mean you guys have heard me talk about Lead Snap. It is absolutely my favorite tool out there. Um, I'm kind of a little biased because of my fear of Google and the, and the maps is to where I don't have to have my staff log into maps anymore. They just log into lead snap and can work into do all the stuff they need to do in there. Um, and that as a business owner and somebody that has to deal directly with the clients, when you have to call them and say, you know, I just, your map of five years just got suspended. We don't know why (laughs) those are not fun conversations. And, we have definitely seen less of that working in lead snap compared to logging into an actual map and working in it in, the, in it that way. So plus I like that you can lock them down. That was always my biggest thing too, is, you know, if so, nobody can come in and change your client's phone numbers, just because they have a level seven guide, which is awesome. So yeah, those are my two, those are my two things, favorite things about it. So sure. but it, yeah. it is a great, friggin' tool. Um, I encourage you guys, if you're in the GMB world and you're not using it, you probably need to look at it. Um, Because, I mean, this is, I've been in the GMB world since I think they started um, back in my maps. And this is just awesome what LeadSnap does. So, Thank you. Yeah, we've been in the laboratory now for, I know I've shown you a few of the things in there. We've been in the lab now for Man, it feels like six to eight months with with updates that we haven't released that are uh, about to hit all at the same time. So really excited for for some of this new stuff to get out there, kind of going from just getting like data back to directions and instructions and autopilot decisions made um, based on real data. You know, Mm -hmm. just like it's 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 pretty awesome. New user interfaces and stuff like this. But. Yeah, it's it. It would not. We would not have been able to do what we have done without this internally. You know, we're managing thousands of Google business profiles, lots of clients. It's it just like it just wouldn't be possible. There's too there's too many things. We you know we're getting 200 suggestions a day on our Google pro- business profiles that are being blocked. I mean, just like trying to do that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we've all had stories where clients' phone numbers were changed and, you know, how long it had been that way and stuff like that before. It's it's a pain in the butt, you know, that even Google allows me to go change somebody else's phone number just because I have this level 10 guide that they gave me. You know, and it's it's a scary situation, but I like the idea that you can lock the listings down, um, you know, and you still can see the notifications that come in. It's not like you can't see. And some of them are pretty freaking blatant. You know, so yeah, I, I like to see the phone number change and then I go, you know, research that phone number. Who the hell did this? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've had it uh, like have like a GBP in Phoenix and they're like, move pin location to Green Bay. I'm like, wow. yeah. <laughs> this is exactly this good for sure. So tell me a little bit about um, what, have, you know, Rank Masters is obviously the coaching program that, you know, Elizabeth and I are just in love with. Um, 
but you, Jeff and Chris, they weren't part of your agency or lead staff before, were they? Or Jeff, did, Jeff was yeah. a sales guy for my agency. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Jeff, Jeff, um, Jeff actually saw me speak at an event in 2019 and that's, it was like a lead generation event. And, uh, he, he, he wanted, he was like, I want to be, uh, you know, you ever just like drawn to somebody like I, I've certainly felt this way towards people, but th that, that was Jeff because Jeff's like, I want to be connected with this guy. And he, uh, we went into the food court and, um, there was a group of people and my wife got up to go get some food and Jeff stole her seat. And then he's like, Hey, my wife comes back with all this food and she's like, <laughs> I was like, sorry, sorry, babe, just give me a few minutes. And uh, so that was how we met. And then, you know, over time I, I brought him into the agency and he was doing sales for us. And uh, then like he was split between the agency and lead snap for a while. And I said, Jeff, like, I've got to have like a full-time salesperson mm -hmm. in both of these. So now he's like the director of partnerships uh, for, for lead snap. So he's, he's kind of like managing, in, in cultivating new relationships with like big relationships. And then I, I put a new person in uh, who, who you guys both met at our last event into our agency. And then, yeah, Rank Masters is our coaching program. So Jeff was a natural slide in for there. But I met Chris at um, Traffic and um, Traffic and Funnels Mastermind. We were both we were both in that. We had paid like like 30K or 25K for six months. And, you know, we just created a friendship in there. Well, yeah, he's a uh, he's he's really awesome, um, and well, the whole, all of them. Jeff is great too. It's just it's a you guys have a really cool dynamic in that group, um, and it's you know there's there's groups out there that you know it's all about the value, right? So you know we all talk about it, whether it be a conference or a mastermind or you know a group that you're joining to learn from, and it's um, you guys as far as as far as value, I've, I have never seen anything like it. So, um, and Elizabeth, what do you, you know, you have a lot of big opinions about it too. I know I'm totally fangirling over you guys. Like I gosh, I, I totally do. But, um, I think it's a true testament that your connections, whether, you know, it could be a random event that you, you, you'll get something out of it that you may not have planned. Um, you're going to get a connection. You're going to connect with people in a different way. Like, I can tell you like Brian Hong and I have been to multiple events at the same time, but the connection that we got at the Gatlinburg event was next level. You know, it, it really made a difference. And, and like, I, I mean, we've probably been at like six or eight different events together. So you just never know when it's the right timing. It's the right person. It's, you know, the right atmosphere, I think has a lot to do with it as well. Yeah. I agree. And I, you know, and, and, and the dynamic of what you're teaching, you know, it's, yeah. uh, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, I mean, obviously I've been teaching SEO type stuff for a long time, but as far as just agency growth and, you know, personal growth and, you know, getting out of your own way type of stuff, you know, is just massive. It's, you know, I, I wish I'd have met you three or four years ago, <laughs> you, Likewise. Know, you know, but, you know, but it's, but it might not have been the right time. So I do believe that, especially for something like rank masters, if you're, if you're ready to go down the next path, that's when you need to do it. And it's, but again, three or four years ago, I might not have been ready to go down into growth. I still might've been over on the fulfillment side and still, still figuring out SOPs and all the crap that we have to do. And so, you know, when I went to your event in February in Orlando, Elizabeth didn't go with me and man, she still rips my ass for this, but, um, you know, and I didn't, I didn't take very good notes. I'm not a real good note taker. It's part of my, I blame it on the ADD cause I'm all over the freaking place, you know, but when Elizabeth came back this time and, you know, master note taker, you know, I mean, now we're implementing daily. You know, we're in those notes every freaking day and just, okay, what else, what else do we need to do? We've done the org chart. We've done the workflows. We've done, the, you know, so it's pretty cool watching how all this stuff plays out. And it's, um, I don't know, it's, uh, I can't stop talking enough about you guys and your group. Um, and what well, you guys. I asked you about the Orlando event and, and I'm like, okay, well, what happened? What did they, what did they talk about? What did they say? And you couldn't really articulate. You're like, you just, you, you just had to be there. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm just so, like, yeah, you had to be, you know, I, I don't remember. You had just had to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, the three of us, we've all been at, at events together and it's, it's just kind of hard to explain it until you feel it, you know, like, um, until you, that that's and honestly, I learn a ton every time. I know that like I'm the one of the driving force behind Rank Masters. But what's been amazing is like having the people come there these these um, these bright minds and building their relationship with them at the event. I learned so much, and I, I know that Chris and Jeff feel the same. Yeah, it's I think having it in a mansion and 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 setting the tone and just like the 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 tone has been carried forth by the community. And it seems like everyone knows what's expected of them and how to act when they're there. And, and, and it just kind of like perpetuates this community where like we're free to share and, and we can be open and a little bit maybe more vulnerable than we do. when we're at some event that's in a, in a hotel where it's like a little yeah. bit stuffy, you know uh, it, it just, it just seems to like set the vibe. And, and when, you know, there's, uh, a pool or hot tubs that happen at the end of the day. And then there's like drinks and food and we're laughing. It's just like these, these like walls we have tend to just break down a little bit, it break down enough to, for people to like be open and, and, and actually like feel comfortable with the problems that they have that can lead to real growth. Right. Which it's, it's not easy. It, I know that's what, what all events strive for. And, and honestly, looking back on everything we've done, you know, the rank masters is certainly not our most profitable venture, but mm -hmm. it is my favorite. Like, it, it's yeah. awesome. Like just to like, like in the end, we want, we, we all kind of want the same things. And, and one of that is like connections with other humans. And like, we get those through our agency and we get those through lead snap. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I, th those, those are much more well known than rank master is currently, but man, it is, I, it, it's probably the thing I'm most proud of professionally now is just like, there hasn't been an event, and, and Terry, you've been to two of them now, but mm -hmm. the two events, there's been both events. Every event we've had, people have broke down in tears. Oh, yeah. Like they, they're feeling it. And it's like, it's, it's I never thought that would happen, but it, it happens mm -hmm. at every event now. You know, people are just so moved by the, by the, the impact that they feel. It, it, that's yeah. awesome to be a part of, man. I, I think one of the things that differentiates it from other events that we've been to is the quality and caliber of people because I've been to other events and, you know, some people are the party crowd and some people are, you know, maybe have ulterior motives. Like, you know, I want, and I feel like the integrity of the group was something that made it so amazing because you're free to share because you know that somebody's not going to like rip off your idea or take advantage of you or undermine you or something like that. And, and that freedom right there, that integrity, that's where we're at. Like, I, I don't want to spend my time with people outside of that level of integrity. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty candid about that. You guys, you guys know me, no BS. Like I, I want no part of that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, party crowd, that's fine. That's just not my crowd, you know? And so I just th feel like what you guys, what you and Chris and Jeff have put together is, is kind of like the perfect combination, you know? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, it's, it's, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's definitely like I, I know you guys have seen a lot of stuff, so um, it, it just means <laughs> That's a lot. An understatement. We've seen a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's to kind of like look at it through that lens and and give that praise. Like, it's just it just means a lot to me. You know, it's it's awesome. Something that like uh, it, it started as just like a spark, and and now these other amazing people have like we've all driven it forward together, and it's just awesome to be a part of it. You know, like yeah. it's, it's so cool. And and like yeah, the yeah. masters, the weekly calls were, I mean, we're seeing people that like, Hey, I, I've been in for a year or two years and these other groups and they have taken all these other programs and I just closed my first client or I've yeah. doubled. We got, we've got like a third of the people that have great, like 300% growth in, in mm -hmm. six months, which is like, Holy cow. You, you know, you, you know, in the back of your mind, like, Hey, I know this, this worked for me. And it's a whole nother question when you try to teach it to somebody else. 
but to see them get the results, like, I guess I had like imposter syndrome on some level when I started to know, like, like, are people going to be able to, was, was I lucky or, and, and to see them do it, you know, it's, it's just so cool. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. It is. And it's, you know, like I said, it's, you know, we, we're the same way. We love to help people and, you know, we love to see people succeed and do better. And, you know, when we did our first conference and we still have people come back every single year and, and we watch them grow and we haven't even, that's not even something that we teach, but we try to put them into groups like yours and put them into groups that do teach the stuff that they're ready for. And, um, it's amazing how much stuff we've been to that we thought was going to be one thing and it wasn't, you know, so, and that happens, you know, it's no blame. It's just, you know, some people have a different idea of helping and growth and teaching than other people, you know? So, um, but no, you guys are doing it right. Um, yeah, I'm, we're, we're so excited to be a part of it. We're and, all in. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So appreciate it. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You guys, you guys are such a great fit for that community too. The energy that you guys bring, and 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 the knowledge and the skills and experience, and it's just like it's it's um, it's it feels like a snowball, you know. And and I, everyone that goes seems to refer people to us too, which is like yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, it is. You know, and then this was the first one that I think some of some of uh, our I'm call them our family came to your family, and that was yeah. really freaking cool. You know, so, you know, talking to people like Gregory and Brian and, you know, um, Dan, I mean, these people just, they're, they're SEO guys and they were just yeah. blown away, you know, and that's, yeah. that's freaking awesome. So Gregor, Gregory, like he, uh, yeah, you know, he pulled me aside and he's like, oh my God, dude, this is, this is so cool. Like he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's a little bit like more shy and introverted but he was just like he felt drawn like he i've got to say something this was you know that was cool that was a cool moment for sure 100 percent. so how much is how much is ai affecting some stuff whether it's in lead snap or um i know you have some ai stuff in lead snap what do you are you going to be doing a lot more with ai in lead snap or what are you yeah. thinking yeah we're we're going like we're, we're we're definitely investing a lot into into ai um, we're working through a lot of stuff w- with our phone system right now to have AI answering and out inbound and outbound as, as well as like responding, um, transcriptions, that kind of stuff. We've got obviously the AI stuff in inside the Google business profile with mm-hmm. review replies and posting. Uh, but we're going to go a lot, a lot deeper with the AI into those pieces. Um, it's always, it's, you know, it, it's such a valuable, you know, uh, valuable capability that didn't used to be there. So mm-hmm. at the beginning, I, I was like, uh, like, how are we going to use this? And then now I've got 10,000 ideas, you know, and, and yeah. as software engineers and uh, like someone that owns a software product, like it's only a matter of time. If you do something great, people, people are going to copy it. That's just the way, it, that's just the way it goes. But it, mm-hmm. it, it is good to get like the first mover advantage on things and be the first one with it out. You know, like, I, I don't know that, like the review replies. Like I, I, I don't know if the AI review replies is in another software. I haven't seen it yet. Um, so it, it's great to be the kind of like the first one to market with that. But um, we're going really deep into the Google business profile with this and and particularly leveraging AI for parts of it um, and, and kind of like blending together parts of our system that are not available in other products that manage Google business profiles that, that we can really mm-hmm. leverage. You know, so I think AI is going to play play a big part in that. We feel as if we have an advantage over every other, you know, um, geo grid and and GBP management platform right now. But I think with the stuff we're about to drop, that advantage is is going to, you know, it, maybe it's going to go up from like fifteen percent to four hundred percent. And and with the AI stuff, I think it's going to go even further. Mm. Um, so there's there's a lot of really cool stuff and. Um, you know, for me, I, I like to go fast and, and mm-hmm. like waiting on development is like, <laughs> I, I'm probably mm-hmm. a hard person to work for, you know, like <laughs> I'm a little patient with things. Yeah. So I have a question. Like I know Terry totally um, is into it for the GBP. Are there some other things that the platform does that maybe we're not taking advantage of that you think that um, would be of benefit to an agency? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a there's a lot that it that it does, right? It it um, does lead tracking and and there's automations around like lead delivery. We have a fully built out phone system. I think our phone system, from like a functionality standpoint, um, you know, it's it's probably closer to something like CallRail, like where we have you know voice tracking and whisper messages with IVRs and um, you know there's automations for texting and follow-up and emails and, and stuff like this. We have reputation management that can combine with, with that. Um, you know, we have, um, see, you, you can fully white label the product. You've got the connection to Google analytics. We're really investing a lot into our reporting, which I know Terry is going to love. Um, let's see what else we got in there. Um, there's, you know, the yeah, sales yeah, yeah, the whole, you have a full CRM system for the lead. There's a full CRM system in there. And, and, uh, you know, we've been really just going after the Google business profile a ton. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn a lot of effort and energy towards the uh, towards like the CRM and and kind of like catching up with some some products that that are out there that that, you know, maybe maybe have some better automations and in, in like workflow stuff. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to closing the gap on that. It's just like we're self-funded and. You know, it's you're always like picking between like which one should I work on. We we feel like with, um, we have, you know, I I I've, I've analyzed every Google Business Profile thing out there that I can find, and I'm like, this is the area where we're the leader. So let's make sure yeah. we stretch that gap, and let's use some of the funding that comes in from that to increase some of these other systems. But we're still working on, you know, still working on the CRM and the 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 phone system a lot. It's just, um, you know we're, we're like, how, like, where are we going to pay for more developers? So I'm excited to bring those other pieces, get, get more and more developers on those. But um, yeah, the, the Google business profile is certainly the one that, that people seem to go the craziest for. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a, like I said, it's, it's great software. Um, you know, we haven't used the phone system yet, which we're getting ready to with a new client that we just took on. It's going to be a good test. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and it's, you know, utilizing the CRM system and stuff. So I'm, I'm excited, especially about, you know, the new stuff that you have coming. I saw the citation thing. I haven't clicked on it yet, but you know, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, what do you, what do you see as far as just SEO in the next 12 to 24 months? You think it's going to get more GBP focused? Um, you know, what are you kind of seeing from a SaaS side, SaaS side? Yeah, I really don't think the GBP is going anywhere. Um, I, I think it's it's all like for the foreseeable future. It seems like it's going to be a, a major a major piece. I do think that um, you know Apple Maps and some of these other they're they're kind of pulling away parts from Google. So it's it, you know I, I would say that to that extent those things are going to matter more than they used to, and and maybe they're going to peel off some of the 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 traffic there, um, but. You know, I think that this this Google Business Profile is going to. I think it's going to continue to be like a, a centerpiece for anybody that's interested in local SEO and local businesses. Sure. Um, Google's obviously investing a lot of time and money and effort into into this. We've seen a lot of changes with it, with how they're doing things, with mm -hmm. reviews and video verification and and all this stuff. You you can kind of just like sit back and look like, okay, this has a lot of attention. They're putting a lot of effort towards it. When that's the case, they're probably not planning on strapping it or anything like that. It's just like it, it drives even the Google guaranteed. They've kind of made that to look like the Google business profile a, a bit. I think that's, that's a, that's a sign. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think whenever there is like a ton of technology, like AI, our ability to predict the future just decreases more and more. It's like things are accelerating faster. So mm -hmm. being able to accurately foretell the future is like be becomes harder and harder, right? We're yeah. like, we're used to this speed and then all of a sudden it's this speed and it's like, how do we're, we're not used to that. So how do we make an accurate prediction on what's going to happen? I'd love, I'd love to hear what do you, what do you, what do you think is going to happen with this, Terry? What's your, your, your deep in the SEO field? I think, I think the biggest thing is, you know, the, the content's got to be more accurate, obviously. I think the biggest problem AI has is it's still just a giant scraper. So 
Um, and depending on how it's used, like training a chat widget or training a, you know, a call system an answering system, you know, I think all that stuff was doable a year or two ago, but I think now it's going to be better. I think as far as search though, I don't see it replacing search, but I do think that SEOs need to be making sure that their content's being picked up by these scrapers, you know, like don't block chat GPT. You know, don't block all these things from hitting your website, you know, because that's the content that's going to be produced in the future. So um, I do think Google's going to be trying more and more to go to more paid like they have been. Um, but I also think they're I don't know. I think right now Google's in a, in a little bit of trouble with the antitrust stuff going on. So, yeah, yeah, that's um, it. it's going to be really interesting to see how hard they get their hand slapped. And, you know, cause they, they are, you know, they are the biggest, the best, you know, there's no doubt about it, but um, it's also gotta be a, still a free tool. So, right. You know, did you, um, did you see a part of that lawsuit? They're paying um, Apple $26 billion a year to make sure that Chrome is installed on new Apple devices. Yep. I like saw what, that. If, what, like think about that from like a Google business profile. Let's say that as a part of this antitrust lawsuit that, that, that clause doesn't mm -hmm. become a requirement anymore or, or is not allowed. Then, yeah. then all of a sudden, like Chrome's not installed by default on Apple devices. Now, like those of us that, that are used to Chrome and like it, we're just going to go install it. And But mm -hmm. for the average user that's just searching, like it, it's probably not going to be there. They're probably not yeah. going to. I don't, I don't know if Google Maps is installed on Apple products by default. Whenever I want something, I go to Maps. Like I, mm -hmm. I instead of like Apple Maps, just I like it better. So... I, I wonder if that type of stuff will, will play into it. And, and like a second thing is, you know, as, as tools like LeadSnap and the other tools out there start to leverage AI for analysis on GBP and instruction, like how is that, like what's, what's the, so it's a cat and mouse game, like, and if we're the mouse, like what's the cat gonna do when, like what's Google gonna do with that? When it's like, okay, all of a sudden, the people that are taking advantage of these softwares just got 10 times better at like making decisions on like how to manage their Google business profile by looking at mm -hmm. millions of records. Like what, what's Google going to do? Like, yeah, they're not going to do nothing. History has shown. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, the, it, speaking of Apple maps, can, is there a way to connect to Apple maps through LeadSnap or are you uh, working? With the citation piece, we, we, we have it. We're not currently like, checking rankings on that. I think that's something that, that we could do. I haven't looked into it and it's, it's something I've been thinking about a lot with, um, you know, just like seeing the trends and, and how, mm -hmm. how rankings are moving and, and how people are using different devices or different, like using Apple maps more often than they used to, yeah. you know? That's interesting. Cause that's, uh, um, and then which one is connected to Yelp? Is that the Bing maps? Um, I don't remember. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of an anti Yelper. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm so anti Yelp. It's unreal. Um, well, cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, you know, the whole idea of what you're doing is on the agency side now. I mean, you you were really niched down. I am. Um, yeah, I'm in concrete. So yeah. I have no problem. I know, like a lot of people are like, they treat their niche like it's their like ATM code or like their social security <laughs> number or something. It's like somebody finds out that you're doing well and then it's like, yeah, I'm in concrete. And it's like, oh, concrete, that's the missing piece. I've got to go, i got to, that's the niche. Um, I'm a big yeah. believer that like with the right execution, like any any niche, you, you can do well. Like I, I know a guy who's doing like a multiple million in the dry cleaning niche, right? And, you know, other people are struggling with, niches that people do fantastic in it's really really comes down to the execution so um we started out in kind of that rank and rent space that's why we we have a lot of sites and a lot of google business profiles um just kind of like fell into concrete if i had it to do over again i would absolutely pick a different niche but now we've got like that flywheel mm -hmm. um, so we've got we've got a big presence we've got a lot of people on our team that are trained to kind of like push this stuff out and, and know exactly where you know, like the the sites that we're going to try to 
in the content that we want, the sites we want links for, all, all this stuff, um, sales objections and the types of jobs they want. So we get a lot of referrals. So, you know, those are all benefits of niching down. Uh, but yeah. we, we run like a blended model of, of doing SEO for client sites and then, you know, sometimes building in other assets to, to have more lines in the water for them. That's cool. Yeah, can I know how how old your agency? 2017. No, um, started out as a software company in 2013. Really started okay. focusing on SEO in like 2014, 2015. My my first job out of college before being an accountant was actually an SEO job in 2001. So, okay. yeah, that was so. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of like had SEO, always paying attention to it. You know, from mm -hmm. from, from the beginning, really. Uh, but the agency really started more focused on, in like 2015 on, on SEO. Right on. So what's your biggest piece of advice to somebody that's brand new into this world? Wow. Start drinking now. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, you know, I, I think trying to get yourself around the right people in, in the not, not only like a, a, a coach, and this isn't mm -hmm. me trying to, sell rank masters or anything like this just like that's made a huge difference for me and you know it it it's we're all going to get stuck at yeah. some point no matter how smart we are no matter what our, our background is like there, there's these thresholds where we have to learn and it can be lonely as an entrepreneur and it can be frustrating when you don't have somebody to to share your struggles with and to like Hey, I've already figured that out, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, there, there's been situations where like, I tried like nine things to get something to work and, you know, I'll, I'll talk to someone and they're like, I'm trying this. And they're like, Oh, that was, yeah, that was the first thing I tried too. And these are like the yeah. next seven things I tried that didn't work. Here's number nine. And that just maybe saves them eight months or, or a year and, and a ton mm -hmm. of money. You think about the opportunity cost of like spending the time doing it wrong versus doing it right. It's so expensive. Oh, yeah. Right. So I, th I think that, I, I think, you know, spending a lot of time on personal development, it, like is, is huge. Mm -hmm. like, no matter um, what your tactical ability is with like SEO, like you're just not gonna move your business forward if you don't have the personal development behind it. And, um, you know, I think like there's, there's so much that goes into it. Being an entrepreneur, it's, the, it's like the ultimate self improvement journey. If you've got a flaw, a chink in your armor, it's gonna be exposed. So you have to be like, have a beginner's mind to be humble enough to realize you don't know everything. And, and that's like, that's great. Like n no one ever looks down on somebody that's like, man, I, I don't know how to do that. But like someone like know-it-alls, like we don't like them, you know, and just kind of like realizing that and, and being okay with like asking questions that maybe feel stupid or maybe like no one else in the group would ask that question. That, that's okay. Like it's, yeah. it's, um, I, I could go on about this topic forever. Like I've, I've made so many mistakes, Terry and Elizabeth, like I've shared some of them with you guys. You guys have seen probably some of them have happened where it's like, okay, like we see why that happened, but it's mm -hmm. just, you know, yeah, that, that, that would definitely be a, a good start is getting around the right people. And, and also when I started out, I was around people that I thought were where I wanted to go. Um, maybe like from a financial perspective, but they were, they were, not the right humans. And there's, there's a, there's a part of the Venn diagram where those things line up where it's like, yeah. like, I want to be like more like this person, or this is somebody I, I, I like them as a human, but they also have the business skills because you can get pulled in the wrong direction. If you're, if you don't spend your time mm -hmm. around the right people, I think, 100%. yeah, mentors are, are huge. Like, yeah. it, and I, I mean, you say like, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. That's the same advice that they give too. It's just like mm -hmm. find people. Like it's it's like how many times do you have to hear it from somebody that is further ahead before you like actually before you absorb it and, and do something with it? And that's you know, that's that's the biggest thing is you know, I had somebody ask me that on Monday or last Monday, and I said, Well, you know, I used to tell people to you know, find a mentor that will teach you and learn from and everything else. And, you know, but then they brought up the point, well, does it have to be technical or personal or business? You know I mean? So like the first step out of the gate and here I am the tech guy. 
So I'm, you know, you need to start technical. Um, but then at the same time, I'm like, I think you need to find somebody that's kind of both, you know, that'll teach you both. Cause it's, you know, first of all, SEO, you got to make money. So you got to learn how to do what you got to do. Um, and then you got to turn, once you start making money, how do you grow? How do you, you know, if you want that stuff, I know freelancers that are perfectly fine with four or five clients a month and that's all they do, you know, but I think the biggest thing, especially coming into this SEO world is, is finding the people you can learn from. And it's not a Facebook group, you know, so, um, I hate to say it, but <laughs> Facebook groups can really send you down a wrong path, you know, mainly because, you know, it's not, I'm a tester. Everybody knows I test almost every freaking thing I do, but I was able to build that from the very beginning. You know, if I was going to be a tester nowadays, I don't know if I could afford to be, to build what I built years ago with today's technology. So, but I think the biggest thing is, yeah, find the right person that will teach you and that you can learn from, but also understand what is it that you want to do? Do you want to just learn SEO or do you want to learn growth? Do you want to learn, you want to be a better person before you do this? Um, I think you just need to look at an internal thing of yourself. And, you know, I used to take five, five people on a year for mentoring. I haven't since COVID was over, but when we did that, it was, I didn't have any of the growth section. It was all just learning to rank a website. That's all it was. So um, and if people are interested in that, we can, you know, that's an easy thing for me to do, but I don't think I would know enough to say, Hey, here's how you should grow from 10 to 30 to 60 to, you know, 88,000 a month to become a seven figure agency. So, but again, I think your network is that key, you know, Hey, you need to go to rank masters. You need to go to this event or you need to go to this event. Um, and I'm, I'm all about events, especially if I'm going to specifically see or learn something. You yeah, know, to, I went to traffic and conversions last year specifically to learn about Pinterest. That's it. That's all I went for, you know, right. and, you know, it was I didn't learn what I thought I would learn. That's OK. You know, I just that's what I, I had a goal and that's what I did. And um, so it was kind of a little bit different thing. So, well, and when you're looking for a coach, I think you need you need that accountability piece. Somebody who's going to, you know, connect with you in you know a couple of weeks a couple of months like where are you what have you gotten accomplished like how are how are you moving the needle for yourself and those temperature checks like is this really the direction i want to go is this what i ultimately want to scale to um you know just so that you have realistic goals and expectations and yeah you know some people say that they want to explode their agency but what does that really mean like you know, how, how are you looking to do that? What steps are you thinking? You know, because like so many of these events and, you know, we're guilty. Like we, we put people on, on stage that we think are going to be amazing for our audience. And sometimes it doesn't always work out how we think it's going to, you know, and then, so there's a lot of different, it's very multifaceted. There's a lot of factors in all of that. I think that you have to look at, you know, are your mm -hmm. coaches ones that are really going to help you grow? Are are they are they growing themselves? You know, I don't know. A lot of stuff to digest. For sure. There, I'll understand. add one more thing to that. Like, there's been uh, there's been many times where where like ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing and like what it is you actually want because sometimes we're doing it for the wrong reasons. You know, if you're trying to build up a huge agency to validate yourself because of like, this is going to prove that, that you're worthy, then like, that's the wrong reasons, right? You, mm -hmm. You're going to get there and you're still going to have this like doubt, right? There's not, there's not going to be enough compliments and things out there that are going to change how you feel about yourself. You're going to have to make that decision internally. So I think starting with the end in mind and kind of working backwards and saying like, Hey, what's the life I'm trying to create? There was a guy that was at, um, I met him at a different event and he was considering coming to our event and he was talking about growing his agency. And I was asking him like, why do you want to do this? Like he was already at a spot where he had all his bills paid for and he was spending a lot of time doing the stuff that he loved. And, you know, I, I, I essentially talked him out of coming to our event because I didn't think it was going to be a good fit. It was like, you're going to try to grow this thing and you're going to create a ton more stress for you. 
you'll get some more money, which is like, but you don't need the more money. So like, why does it even matter? So like, you have to think about what you want out of life. Life is yeah. short. We're all going to say goodbye. And guess what? A hundred years from now, people are not going to know that you even existed for most of us, right? Like think about all the people that were the most important people in the world 200 years ago. We don't even know their names, right? Mm -hmm. So life is short. Like what do you want to do while you're here? You have this limited time. And if you're old enough to like be out of high school and this kind of thing, like you've already used up a good amount of it, right? So like building an agency for the wrong reasons, like – don't start there. What's the life? Then work backwards and say, okay, like how much money is it going to cost me? Right. When we, yeah. when people come in and rank masters, one of the first things we do is called money math. It's like, what's give us a, like exactly the life that you want. Let's figure out how much that costs. Go and get the mortgage cost or the car cost insurance. Let's come up with that dollar. Cause everyone's like, if they've never made $10,000 a month, they say that $10,000, like 90% of people are like, I want to get to 10 K if they've made mm -hmm. like more than 10, but less than, 20 then they want to get to like 30 and then like if they've made 30 they want to get to 100 this is like that's the wrong way to do it simon cynics like start with why like build your number based on something that matters to you that's very personal to you your number should look like fourteen thousand six hundred thirty one dollars and 87 cents once i get to this number accounting for like hey i'm going to have this salary and this profit margin then i can afford this life then that is like tied to something that matters to you and you can just work backwards and say, okay, I need this many. If my average client is this, then I can get to this amount. And, and I think that's a huge mistake that people make. And they get there and they're, they they don't know. It's just like you're trying to fill up somebody else's cup and prove to somebody else that they're like, that's not where it's at. Right. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think it's a big mistake. Yeah. I agree. And that, that's why, you know, so many, I mean, especially, you know, when we, you, you started, when we started, there really wasn't much help out there online on when to do this, you know? So, you know, Elizabeth talks about, we were six years in this business and we didn't even have any friends in this business. <laughs> it was just, you know, it was just us, you know? And so, you know, but once we started going out and seeing what other people are doing it, there's a lot of ways to get to the finish line. We know that in this business, but there's other ways to do things faster you know, maybe more stable, you know, maybe less drama, all these different things. But then when you start talking about going from point A to point B, that's where I see the biggest mistakes made. I mean, Elizabeth and I, we went to your event, you know, three weeks ago. And I hate to say it, this is some of this stuff I should have been doing 14 years ago. You know, I should have started my agency this way. And like the org chart, I had an org chart. Sure, we all have one. I It was on my whiteboard, but, but it was just a graph of some names. It didn't have, it didn't dig down into the org chart. It didn't dig down into the tasks and the different things that moving things around, moving your chess pieces around. And that was probably my biggest takeaway from the whole weekend, you know, and the day after we got back, we sat down in a restaurant and we did the org chart. It took us about four hours, but you know, now we have a freaking snapshot of where we think we want to go. Um, and we still have obviously some spots we need to fill at certain points. And then, you know, my big thing that we're working on now is obviously the incoming lead funnel because you can't forecast if you don't have incoming lead funnels. And, you know, yeah, I get white label stuff all the time. I get some referrals all the time, but that's not something that you can bank on every month, you know, to say, Hey, by month two, we need to hire more people here by month four, we need to hire more people here. And so, you know, and that was the biggest thing when I saw in Orlando is, you know, I've, I've found out very quickly that I have no real incoming lead source that I can basically bet against, you know, forecast against. And, and that's huge for an agency, especially when you're, when you're trying to grow, you have a good month in referrals and white labels. And then the next month is not so good, you know? So, right. and that was the biggest thing for me. And that's what our big focus is now is that we've got to fill that lead funnel and then automate it. That's my second thing. You know, yeah. I don't want to answer 15 freaking calls a day and 12 of them be shit. You know, I don't want to do all the stuff that I teach my clients not to do. So, but that's the, that's the big takeaways. It was, you know, you go to these events, you go to these different things, you learn some little tidbits here, little tidbits there. 99% of what you hear, you never implement, which has always been one of my big pet peeves. 
you know, but, you know, when you do go to these events and you are in a certain space that you're ready to go, make sure you go to the event that's going to solve that goal. Don't go to someplace like traffic and conversions with 6,000 people and think you're going to learn about, you know, filling your pipeline funnel. You know, that's probably not the conference that you're going to learn that, you know. So, you know, if you want to go see Richard Branson talk and some other things, hey, that's a great place to go and do that. You know, my buddy Neil Patel will be there in the next one. So I'm going to go say, hey, Neil, how are you? You know, but (laughs) but again, it's just paying attention to what you want to get out of your goals and do it. And, you know, and then when you're ready to grow, man, I'll tell you right now, there's nothing better that we have found than rank masters. So. Um, it's awesome. And I can't say enough about it just because of the, like Elizabeth said, it's just the, the free flowing of information is because that's the way we are. We're free flowing. You know, there's not many things I do that I keep secret, you know, probably to a fault, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, but still that's just, you know, we free flow ideas and we love going to other events that free flow ideas and, you know, and now we're talking of same thing. And Brian Hong and Gregory, I've been friends with them for years, but now we're now we're going down a different path with them. And that's exciting. You know, well, I have a question for you, Patrick. Like you've been in the industry a minute and, and you've done a lot of different things. If you could go back or change something, what would be a key takeaway from the experience that you have now? And and what would you do differently? Where would you focus on? Yeah. Two, two things like number one is, uh, well, maybe three things. Number one, I would get crystal clear on what I'm trying to make happen. Like what is my agency? I would define it. I'd pick my niche, pick my goals, my income goals, then work backwards on how to accomplish those. Number two is like, I would, I, I, I would have an operator early on. I'm a, I'm a visionary. I'm not great at like the operations and the execution of, of these like daily tasks. I'm good at big problems and better, you know, big relationships. So I'd bring that person on early. Um, I think I had a third one and I lost it, but those would be two of the things that, that I would absolutely start with. Um, I would find, I would find, like I mentioned, I would find like something to be a part of early on. Um, I would make sure that my packages are, are like clearly defined. I think one of the, the realizations that I've had probably in the last year is like, SEO a lot of times is trying to solve like long-term problems for people that have short-term issues and Mm -hmm. you're going to constantly run into churn unless you figure out like a short-term play while you buy yourself time for the long-term. Oh, here's another thing I would do. I would get pipelines like waste. I would start building the long-term pipelines for my business to have people raising their hand immediately. Mm -hmm. Right. We did this on our last rank masters call is I forced everyone. I'm like, we have these this list of pipeline strategies and we have training on each one of these. And like, hey, what are ways that these pipelines are going to provide an avenue for people to find you? And the short term ones are going to bring people in cold because there hasn't been the time to warm them up. The long term ones are going to bring people in and warm and hot, but those take a long time to build out and invest in. So I force everyone in the program, like, what's your short term and what's your long term? You got to have both. You need to be working on the long term stuff. You're going to need this like four to six months from now. These are going to bring in better clients and bigger ones. So start that at the beginning. Right. Don't don't wait until two years or three years or you end up like you guys, which are like and I don't mean that in a bad way. You guys powerhouse SEOs, but we don't have people raising their hand. It's like you guys have a Ferrari parked in the garage, but you you don't get invited to the race a lot of the time. You know, Mm -hmm. like so those those would be things and I see people constantly fantastic SEOs that are amazing. They're world-class at this, but they're like, they don't even get the, the same amount of opportunity to show off their skills. Right. If you look at the, the, what's the big, one of the biggest agencies in the world is like um, Angie's list and home advisor. What are they? They're not great at delivery. They're great at, at they have, they, they call people and they get people to come in and they're a billion dollar agency. So if you have the skills that you guys have and you combine it with that, I mean, you guys are unstoppable at that point. For sure, hundred percent. And you're you're a big believer in niching down, obviously. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I mean, I, I, you can I, be everything to everybody all the time. Right. So, like, 
if, if we're competing, like Terry, Terry is a, uh, a painter that's interested in, in hiring an SEO company. And if Elizabeth, if you come and you say, look, I've worked with painters before. I work with lawyers. I've worked with like doctors and, and like drywall and all these different things. And I come in there, Terry, I haven't worked with all those people, but I've worked with painters all over the country. Here's my case studies. Here's testimonials from other painters. Like here's all these painting sites. Here's Leeds in Dallas, Detroit. Phoenix, all these areas for painting that we've created. Like, it's just like, who are you going to pick? Like, here's, yeah. I know it's, I can speak his language because I know exactly the types of jobs that he wants. And mm -hmm. I know, like, I know the frustrations of his business. I'm going to build a quick rapport. We probably name some, know some of the same people. Sometimes I'm going to get referrals because like, I mean, it's just like, man, you, you look at this, it's, it's so obvious. And if you kind of just zoom out the biggest restaurant in the world, McDonald's. They mm -hmm. run the same playbook everywhere, right? The biggest agencies that I run into, they're niche down and then maybe they add on a second niche, right? It's just like, how many times do I have to see that before I'm like, okay, this is this is what I have to do. So, I mean, when I made that decision, my agency was like, whoosh. Right on. Yeah, same with us. You know, and we're niched down on the SEO side, not so much on the web design side, just because Elizabeth can build, you know, any website for anybody. But yeah, I agree. I I matter matter of fact, I've got a guy wanting me to, you know, hire me, and I'm actually charging him to learn the niche. So, you know, he he wants me that bad, and I'm like, dude, I don't know this niche. I said, you know, I'm I'm gonna need some time to, you know, check this out if you're gonna pay me all this money. And so, but I'm a huge believer in niching down. Um, I was all over the map. We went into medical about a year year and a half before COVID hit, <clears throat> and we were damn near close to seven figures just in medical and then COVID hit and kicked our butt, but it still didn't deter the fact that, you know, I knew the niche, I knew the pricing structure. I knew what they were struggling with. You know, I was able to have conversations with them about, you know, especially about what do you do when you get the lead? It's amazing how many people don't know their lifetime value of client and all these different things that we ask. Yeah. Them. But, um, but I think, I don't think I could do that if I was in, all over the map, 15 different niches. And, you know, and it's, I think it's important to, like you said, you know, if you can know the niche, if you know the terminology, if you know the content, you know, you can take one package from here and move it to here and move it to here. And you're going to dominate markets much, much, much faster. So, yeah, you know, absolutely. But, and, and you think too about like some of these pipelines, right? The, the pipelines that we're talking about, those, the reason that people come in hot is because of the positioning. And if you're not mm -hmm. niched down, it can be hard to have the positioning. You know, if, if, uh, if Elizabeth had some issue with her heart valve, you're not going to feel comfortable taking her to a general doctor. You're going to take her oh. to a heart specialist, right? Where they're like, this, this is what I do. Like, mm -hmm. you're not going to gamble on that. People don't want to gamble on that with their business either. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%, especially when you get to people that, you know, like people that come to me, typically I'm the third or fourth or fifth or 10th agency they've hired, you know, in the past five or six years. And so, you know, it's a lot of the stuff is, you know, making sure that, you know, you can do what you say you can do, you know, and, you know, and be able to, you know, create a partnership with these people. And if you're just the SEO guy, you're going to get rolled over. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to be more, you've got to be, you know, one of my biggest things I love teaching nowadays is, you know, if you get a client that gets a thousand hits a month and they're not getting any leads, the first thing you should look at is conversions. You know, you just raise conversions 20 percent. You're a hero to this company, you know, so don't just jump into a freaking new project and start SEOing it. You know, look at it from a much bigger picture and and learn and test, you know, change a button from red to yellow and just do all this stuff that we do for you know, conversion optimization and, you know, and become right. more to that client. So when they do decide to leave, if they leave, they know they're going to be taking a lot more than just SEO. So. Sure. And, and Terry, know. if you think about it too, like let's say that the, the site's converting really well and it's like 5%, right? So that means like 95% are not coming through. And mm -hmm. if these people are coming in and they're at the top of the funnel, then like w most of us, just give up on that 95%. But if you niche down and you create lead magnets and nurturing sequences that can take this 95% and turn that into 
maybe 40% of those people come through in six months. But if you've already cracked the code for that niche, like the conversions can go through the roof by installing this system for a new client that they've never had, right? We're yeah. like, hey, these are the concerns with the homeowner when they're considering this service. And here's mm -hmm. the guy. And then here's like information. Then like a week later, I send him like, hey, in, in, in your area, um, houses sell for 4% more when they've had this service. So with the average house price, it's this. We like real information that somebody cares about. And then here's yeah. like a testimonial. Like, what does that do for that conversion rate? Is it going to be that like those 95% of people that were no, is it, is it still going to be zero of those 95% or like, is that going to change? Absolutely. If you're niched down and you built out those resources and you know the hooks and the triggers, like you can capitalize right away for these people. You become such a more valuable market. You, you start to have the ability to be able to predict success for your clients. Yeah, for sure. And that way, when you have your monthly strategy calls, you can upsell, you can side sell, you can do more for your client each each and every time uh, because now they're excited because they see things happening that they haven't yeah. seen before. Um, cool. You know, so it's it's one of those things that I really think you need to make sure that, you know, I saw a post this morning in one of my Facebook groups and, you know, I just got hired by a new lawyer. What's the first thing I should do? <laughs> well, give the money back is the first thing you should do. You know, because you're not ready to take on that client yet. Yeah, and, you don't know the answer to that question. There's 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 problem. Exactly. So, you know, um, you know, don't practice on clients' websites. You know, I can tell you a bad SEO takes 10 times longer to fix than just doing it good the first time. You know. Oh, and it's painful. Google. I can tell you I've we've got a project right now. We're trying to fix something that was done so grossly inaccurately. And the energy and resources from our team to undo that crap, please. And then, and, and then getting Google to come back and see that we have fixed it and start giving us good credit for it. So, um, but yeah, totally. So anyways, we're a little bit over our hour. Um, any last minute piece of advice for people? Like I said, you need to, if you're in GMB world, you're not losing leads and using lead snap, you need to do it immediately. And then if you are ready to grow and you want a team of people around that will watch you grow and make sure that it's, you know, that you're, that they're there for you, that's, that's rank masters. So. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I appreciate being on here. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I try to pride myself on being approachable, you know, so I'm on mm -hmm. Facebook. I don't, as you see, I don't have a K on my name, which makes my name pretty rare. Um, PatrickShannon.com. We've got leadsnap.com, rankmasters.com. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, reaching out doesn't mean I, I, I don't try to push or, or hard press people for me, like make a connection. If you're interested in one of these things, cool. If not, like I'm, I'm still happy to connect and with other people that are trying to grow, that are trying to do cool things that, that are, you know, good to other humans and, mm -hmm. and you know, just want to become a better version of themselves. So, um, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys and, and this opportunity to, to, uh, share my story with you guys. Yeah, no, it's been our pleasure having you on. Um, you know, it's uh, we're very excited about what we're all going to be doing in the future together. Um, so, um, when do you think your next event's going to be? If you were thinking February, I think February. Um, you know, we're like as a part of this, like the Rank Masters tagline is personal freedom through agency mastery, right? So, mm -hmm. as a part of that personal freedom on my end, my wife and I are going to go um, like five or six weeks. We're leaving in. October until the end of November, we're going to be going to um, Portugal and Spain and Paris and, and kind of cruising around there. Yeah. So with that in the holidays, you know, I think just waiting until February when it's nice and cold everywhere and bring people down to Florida so that they can enjoy the most amazing swimming pool and mm -hmm. like house ever, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool. So, you know, um, we'll definitely talk more about that sucker for sure. So, um, but yeah, thank you, Patrick, for your time. Elizabeth, any last minute things? Nope, I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, exactly. So, and then let us know, obviously, for anything that you guys need. We're we're here for you guys also. So, appreciate that. Yeah, you guys um, are awesome. But thank you guys for joining us. Like and share and do all the stuff that you're supposed to do with this type of stuff. And then um, we'll get this reposted up in YouTube and everything. And then... Um, I'll make sure you get a copy of it so you can Thank put you. it out there yourself. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Oh, we'll see you, yeah, see you next Monday at 10 o'clock. Oh, actually? No.
No, we'll be coming back from Washington, D.C. So, um, anyways, we'll figure out something for next Monday. Maybe we'll do something and then just post it. So, anyways, everybody, have an awesome week. Be safe. Act good. Adios.